Welcome to an IronCAD tech tip video. This is actually from uh, Two Tall Toby's models. This is actually not a daily challenge, but we wanted to show you this one. Uh, we have a video link on this as well that we'll post uh, for how this is done in uh, SolidWorks, so you can kind of take a look at this. Uh, but why we did this is uh, kind of to highlighting some of the things that uh, they're they're talking about in SolidWorks, where they do an adjustable uh, sketch pattern. So where this uh, model here can adjust to give you these uh, particular uh, tubes along here that follow the arc path. So we can actually do this as well in our CAD. So I just wanted to go through and show you how this is done. This is actually using penetration points in our sketch. So I'll show this in our innovative environment, but this can also be done in a structured environment as well. But I'll go ahead and hop over to IronCAD and show you how this is done. And this is actually using uh, one of our latest uh, beta versions of IronCAD 2025. So now you'll get to see a little bit of that as well. So for this de demo, we're not going to use any uh, of our catalog items here. So, you know, we can just uh, keep this to our side here so we don't use that too much in this case. We're going to actually use sketches here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just start off with a 2D shape and I'm going to do my base sketch. And if, if you watch the other video, you'll kind of get an idea of how we did this um, in our, our environment. So we're in millimeters. And some of the key things that they have on this is there's a, a maximum size. Let me bring this back over so you can kind of see this. There's a maximum uh, outside 175. And we have a height of 80 here and a height of 22. 22. Everything else is basically eight uh, spacing here and 13 from the start, and then the four millimeter on these tubes. So I'll kind of highlight those in eight uh, millimeter on the center for these, uh, 10 on the outside as well. So uh, we'll kind of highlight this as we go through this. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, instead of just kind of drawing this arc path, so you can draw a line, do an arc, an arc, mark back around and then to mention all that I'm just going to do a quick way to do this and one of the things I like to use is you can just use a rectangle or the center rectangle to do this I'm going to start in the center and I'm just going to drag this out and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and type in those overall dimensions which we have 175 and 80 as I mentioned so that kind of drives our, our geometry and what we're going to do is going to build this profile inside of here and then we'll offset it to get to our center line of our basically our path so we need we need to use the outside dimension for these arcs down here which will be a 10 millimeter and uh, that'll be our main thing so what we're going to use to do this is we're actually going to use uh, two tangent one point and a couple things that you can note here so if you want to have uh, the tangents automatically created for you and maybe some of the dimensions you can do that as well inside of here so uh, we'll show you that but uh, it's not really necessary for this one we're not going to do much any modifications to it but anyways i'll show you that in an, another section here in a second so what i'm going to do is gonna pick these two points here and i'm going to right click and i'm going to set that to 10 millimeters and we'll do the same thing for this one over here again 10 millimeters on that side so that gives us our, our corner points here and now we just need to do our arc and again i'm going to use one of our advanced ones here which is a two tangent and one point so i'm going to do the tangent to that arc and tangent to that arc and basically just come up and snap to that top so that's going to give me my actual shape that i need and i'm just going to trim away this extra geometry that i don't need so i don't need these intersections here on the inside and i don't need this out here or this other geometry on the top so that basically gives us our profile that we need. Now the key thing is this is the outside, so we wanna do the offset of this. So we're gonna select this and just do an offset. And we don't wanna go on the outside, we wanna go on the inside. So we're gonna flip that direction and it's gonna tell us it's too big right now, that's fine. Uh, Cause we only wanna offset that to two millimeters. So that should give us a good value. So that's our two millimeter, which gives us a total of four for our tube. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay to place that. And we can just turn this outside geometry to a construction. So that gives us our information for our basic uh, base shape for our model. So we'll go ahead and hit OK to finish that. So that gives us our, our bottom profile here. So next we're going to do our other connected pieces here. So this is what's going to show um, our key capabilities for the penetration point. So how we're going to do this, start with the 2D sketch again, and we're going to just do a point, and I'm going to place it right here on this uh, point of our curve and go ahead and hit OK, and that's gonna zoom into our profile. It's gonna flip us upside down, but that's okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take this profile and I'm gonna turn it using our tri ball, hitting F10, and I'm just gonna rotate that 90 degrees here, so I can right click or I can left click and type it in either way. will work inside of IronCAD, so we'll place that there at 90 degrees, and then we also need to move this in 13 millimeters, so it's 13 from the end of that guy. So that will give us our location for our profile. Next, we can just use our, sorry, we can use our flat view here command just to orient ourselves so we can see here. 
And again, I'm going to use this center rectangle to draw this. And one of the th things I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw it out here. It doesn't really matter the size, just some uh, shape here that we need because we're going to use these penetration points to drive this. Now, a couple things we want to do again. Now, these need to be eight millimeter turns here. Uh, again, so a couple things we can do is right click and go to our constraints and we can turn on certain things. So we want to turn on our tangents um, possibly and maybe we want to turn on our radius to see those as well. So now that when we go and add our fillets, so what we're going to do first is select all this and we're going to add a fillet on this corner here. If I pick that right, there we go. Oops, sorry. Let's uh, select that again. Pick our fillet in there and then when you right click, we can set that to 8 to apply that value for us. Uh, let me make sure I had that on. Okay, yeah. So uh, it won't create those for the fillets, won't create those dimensions for us because we're just doing it uh, dynamically there, but we can just add those after the fact if we want to see that. We can add those there. Um, hit OK. We'll add one over here if we like, or we can do an equal length either way. is fine for those as well. The key thing we want to do is make sure that these are horizontal in here. So I'll show you why because we're going to move this thing. So we're going to select both of these and just say, all right, this is actually vertical, not horizontal. My bad. So those are vertical there, and this one is actually horizontal down here, so we'll lock that one. So we got this kind of basically constrained to, so it allows us to move this. And I'm just going to rotate my scene. So what I'm going to do is this, is this point needs to go through this arc. So we're going to use a penetration point constraint on the sketch. So we can select this point, select that arc, and it'll move over to that location. And we can do the same for the other side as well. So now that we have those penetration points there, and it's got the radius 8 millimeter, uh, the last thing we need to do is set the height for this. So in this case, we're going to select that bottom curve, that uh, center line that's going through there. And we know that needs to be a total of uh, 22, but we've got our thickness of our tube. So we need to subtract 4 from that uh, total. So that's 18 for that value. And there we've got our curve. We can hit finish. And now we've got that profile there. So that penetration point gives us some advantages here. So now if we want to do it, instead of doing a pattern, we can actually just do a copy of this curve. So we can just turn that tribal on. And in this case, we're just going to make a, a copy of these uh, at a value of 12 because it's got to, again, count for the thickness of our tubes. Uh, so it's 12 for the distance. And we want five more of those. And we can hit OK to apply that. And notice when we made those copies, since these penetration points exist, it's going to move all those curves all the way to each one of those. So that's a very nice uh, capability of those penetration points. It'll automatically move those and readjust as we made the, made, made the copy of those curves. So now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and actually do the sweep command. So first we'll go ahead and select our uh, base profile, select our sweep because we do have what we call kind of an action object here. We're going to do a new standalone part. In this case, uh, we want to do a circular profile inside of here and we're going to use the guide curve of uh, this is our guide curve and we're going to set this value to four millimeters. That's way too big right now inside of there. So one thing we do, uh, our does handle the closed path pretty well inside of here so it doesn't angle these turns here that actually follows the line segment there and, and sweeps quite well for that. So there's no adjustments that we need to make for that. Uh, but one of the key things we do, we don't, we don't want to hit OK here because if we hit OK it just acts it out and we have to go back through the process again. We can actually hit apply. So what this is going to do is apply this and uh, before I do that, I do want to make this a link profile. So I can link to that 2D profile. If I want to make changes later, this will update uh, outside of that. So I'm going to hit a link to that profile, and I'm going to hit apply. So what that does, it keeps this in the command, keeps all of our settings here. So now I'm on the path selection here. I can simply select our next path, and it will apply that there. Keep the link, and we'll just hit apply again. And we can just repeat this for each one of these curves. So just kind of hitting those apply. I think we can also right click and hit apply as well, but you can just see as I'm going through here. So I've got those three there, and we'll just do this next one. And our, I guess there's a couple more here. That one, and that one. And on the last one, we just go, go ahead and OK to apply that. So you can see now we have our profiles all created. It creates one single part here for us, and creates all the features uh, as a sweep inside of there. So that's our shape. Uh, for this model and if we look at our properties and we have a mass density of 7800 that should get you at 129 uh, for the mass in grams so that's how you can do that and a nice thing as i mentioned so when we did that as links here so all of our profiles stay at the top so structure parts will uh, put the profiles underneath the part uh, as it builds it so it's inside this part and moves around with the part this adds actually adds it at the scene level and i can just assemble all this as one assembly if i like 
um, to keep them contained together. Uh, but anyways, it gives them gives me the capability to access any one of these. I can hide everything else on the scene, just see these. So for example, maybe I want to adjust the height of this one particular profile here. I can actually access that and say, let's just set that to 22 to make it a little bit deeper inside of there so I can see there's an adjustment there and the profile of the sweep will automatically adjust since it's linked to it. So that's a nice capability with those uh, ability to link to the profiles. So hopefully you find this uh, video useful. This is, a, again, this is a, a tech tip just kind of showing you one of the key highlights really is that penetration point and how it works with copying of 2D profiles. And we hope you enjoy and we'll see you on the next one.